everyone, it's Nicole Wilkins with Fitness RX for Women. This is the next question and answer segment where I took your questions from Facebook and I'm going to answer them for you today. The first question I have is What is your take on working traps for a female figure competitor? I hear so many varying opinions. Well, I've never actually had specific trap training days. Whenever I'm doing shoulders or back, I'm hitting my traps, so I don't think I need a separate day to do those again. Um, you know, I mean, you work on when you do lateral raises or shoulder presses or rows, so you are hitting them. But uh, I think for bodybuilding, it's a little different. For figure, uh, I don't think it's necessary. The next question is, from my younger years of doing shot put and discus, I have overdeveloped my right lat and underdeveloped my left. Do you have any advice on how to correct this? Well, your lat is right under here. So one thing that I would recommend is doing unilateral exercises. So instead of using both arms to pull down, use one arm at a time. So you could do one arm lat pull down, you could do one arm rows. So every other week, throw in an exercise or two of a unilateral exercise and that will help you know, work out the imbalance. The next question is, I have days in the gym when I feel like I've worked extremely hard on a body part or groups of body parts, but then wake up the next day to find that I'm not sore. I am I still getting as much benefit on the days that I do have muscle soreness after training? In other words, does muscle soreness always equal muscle growth? And the answer to your question is no. You don't have to be sore to gain muscle. Some, things, some, day, some weeks you're going to have days where you're really sore, and other weeks you're going to have days where you're not so sore. As long as you're working out at intense and you're training as heavy as you can, um, if you're not sore for a very long duration of time, that just means that your body is recovering efficiently. If you're sore for you know five plus days, either you did some stuff that your body isn't quite used to, or your body isn't really repairing itself um, very as good as it could. So some things you could do to maybe increase the intensity is drop sets, uh, supersets, so resting a little less maybe adding an exercise or two to increase the volume of your workout, um, making sure that your range of motion is good, so in, make sure, for example, when you're doing a bicep curl that you're using full range of motion, really stretching and squeezing the muscle. Um, half repetitions, you may be not, you know, you're not stretching the fascia enough, so you may not be um, experiencing the soreness from that. So little changes and tweaks, making sure you're not doing the same exact thing every week, that will help um, kind of kick up the intensity. The next question is, is a calorie burned a calorie burned no matter how you do it? Well, yeah, I mean, every, every physical activity you're going to do requires energy, which requires burning calories, uh, which will result in burning calories. So no matter what you do, uh, whether you run or jump or play soccer or swim or weight train, you're always going to be burning calories. Now the amount of calories that you burn is going to vary between exercises, uh, activities, your body weight. I mean, if I were to run with a guy who was two times my size, even though we were going the same duration, same speed, he would be burning more calories than me because it takes more energy for him to move his body than it does for me to move my body. So there are many factors that play a role in how many calories you burn, but all exercise will burn calories. And the last question I have is I saw you recommended waiting to go to a national level show and not just to go because you're qualified. Why? Well, just because you're qualified at a local show at a national qualifier doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't go. I mean, if you are going to go with an open mind and whatever happens, happens, and you've got the money to do it, by all means, please go and enjoy the experience. And who knows, uh, you may do well. But for the majority of the people who place you know, third or fourth at a national level show and expect to go to nationals and place well, most of the time it doesn't really work that way uh, because you don't have enough experience yet at the local level. I mean, in my opinion, you should be winning on a consistent basis at national level shows in your state before jumping to that next level you, where you're competing against the best in every state. 
it's not cheap to go to nationals. Um, you know, you have to pay, pay for your flight, your hotel, your suit, your tanning, your hair, your makeup. I and mean, it's, it's, it's not cheap, but it is an extremely rewarding experience. I just recommend, you know, waiting a little bit longer and really making sure that you've worked out all the tweaks in your body and your posing and your prep before moving to that next level. And, um, you know, because sometimes it takes a little bit longer for you to kind of work your way up. You're going from competing between 10 and 15 girls in your class to 40 to 50 of the best in the nation. So, you know, just go in with an open mind. And whatever happens, don't blame anyone else. Just look at yourself and say, okay, what can I do now to better myself for the next time? And go from there. So I hope that helped. I'm not trying to steer anyone away. I'm just trying to give everybody a realistic approach and know that, you know, it takes time. There are shows all year, every year, so make sure you're ready before you go to the next level. I hope that answers some of your questions, and I hope you guys are having a great week. Keep living the fit life, and keep asking your questions. I'll be back every week to answer them for you. So until then, have a great day.